All right, so good afternoon, YouTube, or good morning. Yeah, shit, I guess I'm that tired. Anyway, good morning, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a statement that I made that didn't really make much sense to most of you. And I understand why, because it was a claim that is very much an oversimplification of a lot of things. But at the same time, in a time, a place, in a moment where everyone wants to overcomplicate things, I do think that simplifying things is going to be necessary, especially because so many of you have paralysis by analysis, training ADHD, you want to have everything in your program all at one time, and don't really understand the ebb and flow and the manipulations that you make long term. One of the ways that this kind of reveals itself is in your progressions, it's in how you program or periodize if you feel that periodization is a necessary factor. So when it comes to the claim that I made, I said, all programs are linear. Now, this is really what I mean by that. All programs have a element of linearity, meaning you're going to be increasing or decreasing a certain variable across a certain amount of time. The main differences across certain types of progressions, across different types of periodizations is how uninterrupted those are. The reason why novices and linear progression gets a bad name is just because of they don't manipulate anything beyond weight. If you only change the weight on the bar every single week, I think that that is a unsustainable way to train long term. So let's kind of go over the first graph. So if we're looking here, right, we're looking at the linear, like a straight up just honest to God, um, standard linear progression, right? This one right here. The blue line and the blue ink will always represent volume, whereas the red will always in, in, uh, represent intensity. When it comes to a linear periodization type of training, which is very viable, regardless of the stage of training that you're in, it's just like certain things will have to change. You will find that volume starts at its highest and over time goes down and increasing intensity increases to compensate. So let's say, for example, you start out in your tens. You might spend two weeks at each of these thresholds before you move on into the next one. So you have your tens block, you have your eights, then you do your sixes, then fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones. So over here, you're building a base, getting some good quality volume in, accumulating volume, accumulating um, tonnage, uh, building up some muscle and then here you have a phase where you're kind of in the middle of the range and you're getting more so of strength endurance or uh, starting to acclimate your body to that higher intensity and then you finally finish off with those higher intensities so that is just a straight up linear periodization model the thing is that i want to make clear is that there is a big difference between linear periodization and linear progression linear progression just means you're adding weight session to session or week to week while sets and reps stay the same. So five by five, like strong lifts five by five, um, starting strength, uh, I think Mad Cow, I think uh, Grayskull, they all run that very similar thing, right? And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. The only problem where it becomes wrong is when you become too loyal and too rigid with that system. So let's say we do kind of, uh, I'm gonna have to move around here and hopefully you can still hear me because uh, i'm getting further away from the mic so might have to come into the shot so that way the audio doesn't like go to crap but let's say we go here right we change up some of the numbers and you're doing your five by five right you're doing your five by fives you're just literally progressing as all like every single week and that's it Eventually, you hit a wall, you stall. Maybe what you do is you drop down to a three sets of five. And then that might be enough where volume has now decreased and intensity has gone up to match. Maybe eventually you'll need to do something, or maybe in this point of uh, point of time, you might have to do three sets of three, right? And then eventually you get them down here and you do like five sets of one, three sets of one, two sets of one, whatever. But the idea still remains. But... If you are a complete knucklehead and don't want to change literally anything or only want to, let's say, forever use dynamic double progression. So let's say you're here in the like doing uh, five sets of five to eight. That is a horrible eight. Let me uh, make it bigger for you. Boom. That is barely any better. But anyway, 
if you want to just use dynamic double progression all the time, what you're going to still find is that you still will stall. And then it might still benefit you to drop down maybe into the four sets of four to six. And then three sets of one to three or two to five. You still need to, over time, manipulate your volume and intensity. You can, for the most part, especially if you have more strength-oriented goals. Now for hypertrophy, using something like dynamic double progression and other systems very similar to it, like evolving rep ranges, the rep goal system, is very viable for size. Typically because you are going to adapt to a weight and then you're going to increase weight as necessary. That's just for hypertrophy. Now, when it comes to strength, you should try to progress in a realistic, but also, I'm not trying to say guaranteed, but you should plan to progress <laughs> like week to week. The only differences with strength training is that you will have to eventually peak and draw back. You can't just go from easy to hard training and then stay in hard training forever. That's something I mentioned in the previous video on um, intensity. So because progression is so very important with um, intensity, right? So now let's go over to block, right? So people like to think that block is something so incredibly different. I don't necessarily think so. There is a video by Alexander Bromley and I, it's very likely that I'm just misunderstanding him. Don't, so don't take my word for gospel. Um, do your own research. Uh, you know, check my arguments, check my facts and my logic, everything like that, right? Be responsible with the content you consume. But from my understanding, my understanding of block is that what block gives you is better context. It gives you better context for choices that you make elsewhere in the program. So, for example, with a linear period periodization model, you are basically told, okay, you have your five, you're doing your, you're doing a certain amount of time in your tens, then your eights, then your sixes, then you start going into other phases, right? It doesn't really tell you anything about other things in the program. What about your accessories? What about what movement exercise, like what exercise selection should you have on your accessories? What type of progression should you be running on your accessories? How much of your accessories should you be doing at this point in time? Block gives you context for all that, but that doesn't really change much when it comes to the main movement. So go going to draw back to like the numbers that I had here. So let's say five by five, I pretty sure like these were just numbers I threw out, right? Then four by eight, three sets of six, three sets of five, uh, three sets of four. Uh, let's do four sets of three and then five sets of one or something to like a new one RM, right? What makes this different from this is simply these lines. Like there, like something like that, right? By you putting these lines there, you have now put block periodization onto the main movements at least. But like I said, what block gives you is context for everything else in the program. You are in a hypertrophy phase. You can be doing a bit more bodybuilding work. You should be in higher rep ranges for other things in the program. Once you get to your in more intensity phase, you're starting to reach closer to your one or max, certain accessory exercises should drop from the program or the volume on them should drop um, immensely. So you might be doing one set of eight. You might be doing two sets to failure. You might be doing substantially less volume than in this phase for your accessories than you were on this one. So like I said, the benefit to block periodization is that it gives you context for other decisions you make elsewhere in the program. But generally speaking, when it comes to the main movement, the idea is pretty the same. And this is what I mean when you can't escape linearity from a program. There is a article written on the juggernaut training systems website called there's only one type of periodization and it does simplify certain context uh, concepts it might only apply because the way they define certain terms but i don't really think it really matters all that much because oftentimes when people say things like all programs are linear they're always going to bring up this right here and, and i drew it out to kind of show you um just how uh for a lack of better words, stupid, and you kind of sound when you say like, oh, what about non-linear periodization or non-linear progression? It's like, let me uh, kind of show you something, right? Even with something like the Texas method, you are expected, 
like the Texas method is um might be a bad example just because like sets and reps actually don't change over time for the most part i know that there's um manipulations that can occur but as it's written as most people will run it they'll just run it like this so that's why it's not my favorite but it's kind of an example of that right but even with that you are going to linear progress here or at least that is the goal that is the hope that is the intention you're going to then by very nature of this being higher because you're doing 90 percent of this number now that this number is increased this number increases this now linear progresses and this now linear progresses as well part of the reason why i don't like the texas method as the best example is because like i said sets and reps typically will not change when most people run something like the texas method um and also i think the texas method is just not a very sustainable way of training but let's look at something completely different and something a bit more relevant to most of you those of us because i myself have done this as well who run volume days so volume days and intensity days so here's my thing with uh non-linear periodization bros it's not like you're progressing in a completely different manner in a completely different way regardless of the day you're just doing it in different thresholds so let's say you have one set to a top set of one to five reps and then you do some back offs right you are might start like doing some tops your top set might start at fives and then you slowly whittle that down to threes and ones but your back off sets kind of match accordingly but regardless even if it's not weekly your intention is across the weeks across the months to go up in weight and then that applies here as well so here you could be doing something like sets across so you could be doing three sets of six three sets of eight three sets of ten and then you might do an amrap on the last set or you just might do sets across and then add weight next week or something like that right doesn't really matter you're only going to progress in one direction and that is going to be going that way now like i said this information here is more relevant to strength but now there are some manipulations that we can do to make it um more viable more appropriate for more intermediate lifters or more hypertrophy focused lifters and that is extending the time frame this is where this is like the big picture stuff right this is just the um the way that it kind of shows itself like when you like take a like when you step back and take a more macroscopic view but i don't have like a big eraser so it's going to take me a while but when it comes to how things kind of go when you're more hypergy focused when you are a bit more advanced and everything like that there's a couple manipulations that are usually used that extend this out so it's not week to week which is going to be appropriate the rate of progression is going to slow down the more uh the longer you stay in the game like not it's not necessarily the more advanced you get or something arbitrary such as that but just there's a rate of diminishing returns there is a slowdown in progress like you can't expect a level 50 to progress at the same rate as a level one so it's just a matter of that right but when it comes to what i was mentioning if you start adding things in like let's say step loading or wave loading so you're here, then you're here, then you're here, right? So this is um, volume and intensity over time. Let's say here you're starting out at three sets of 10, and then you bump up to four sets of 10, and then you bump up to five sets of 10, and then you reset at a higher threshold. So once you go back to three sets of 10, you're going to be here. And then when you are there, you're here. And then you're here. And then you just kind of go off that over a long period of time. So for a certain amount of time, let's say you're here at 185 for, let's say, your bench or something like that. On the next week, you might go up to 195. But now this represents three weeks of training rather than trying to just increase every single week in weight. So for three weeks, you're going to be at the same weight. For And then for three weeks again, you're going to be at 195. And then it kind of repeats from there. That extends the amount of time that you spend at certain thresholds. And step loading doesn't have to be only um, sets. You can do reps as well. So let's say you have three sets of six, three sets of seven, if you want to be cursed, and then three sets of eight. Same thing kind of applies. Choose sets or reps. Don't do both. It just kind of are, um, 
it just kind of, it's not necessarily that it makes things worse it just makes things uh, more unnecessarily complicated and you want to remember you're kind of running a science experiment on yourself you want to manipulate the smallest amount of variables necessary for you to get a reliable a reliable result and a result that you can measure without thinking to yourself like oh am i actually measuring the thing i want to measure so there's that right and even when you do something like let's say waves like uh I think the video that I'm referencing with Alexander Bromley kind of like looked like this, right? But it's kind of like that. But even then, you're always going to go back to a certain level of easier training and go from there. So I think that when it comes to waves, he kind of explains it a bit better. So I would highly recommend you watch that video. But generally speaking, the reason why I'm trying to tell you that all programs are linear this is probably not the most accurate statement but it's more appropriate to say all programs have an element of linearity you cannot escape it because i see a lot of you guys like Ugh. like you guys think you guys are uh well not a lot of you like some I, I see some people out there let me like i'm not gonna apply this to all of you guys because i know like my guy like a lot of the people who are like uh more diehard watchers of the channel are very big brain smart right but i see a lot of people think to themselves like oh linear progression bad all my favorite youtubers say linear progression bad not good for size not good for strength and like they have a nugget of truth but they don't necessarily know why and when i say something like all programs are linear the reason why it sets off something in their brain is because they don't necessarily understand the other parts of the pro like the uh the program they don't really understand the other parts of information that should be integrated into their knowledge you can't escape linearity when it comes to your training even something like conjugate you, the idea with conjugate is that you start out with a um a variation that is not so specific but you still do like a one rep max with it or like a daily max to it like you know 90 percent or something like that one rep shy failure and then you have your most specific variation here and the idea is that you fill it in with a bunch of other variations, right? So that way, when you go to your most specific variation, your competition variation, you are now stronger. And then when you reset, the goal is you run through this exact same kind of thing. Like you go back to whatever movement you decided at the beginning. But this time, when you come back to that most specific variation, you should be higher. So... This is what I mean by an element of linearity. I'm not literally saying all programs are just linear for different flavors of linear progression. No, like you still should manipulate certain aspects, whether it be exercise selection, conjugation, whether it be sets and reps, undulation, or weight, linearity. Like all of these things are going to ebb and flow with one another when it comes to your training, when it comes to your programming, which is why I highly recommend watching the video by Alexander Bromley, his entire programming um, playlist is a treasure chest. And then to go onto the JTS website and read that article about the one type of linear, uh, or there's only one type of periodization. And guess who wrote that article? Mike Isertel. Mike Isertel wrote the second half of that article. There's two parts to it, but it's still really short. And I'm pretty sure Chad Wesley Smith and uh, Greg Knuckles were involved too. So you science boys who uh, can't wrap your head around this, you have no excuse anymore. So there's only, uh, um, I know it was like kind of like a small amount of like, you know, as Bald Army Man says, Sammy Sasha's heads who uh, were really just like up in arms for some reason about mentioning linear as if it's like a bad word. But no. When it comes to your training, your, your training will go into one direction, but it's just a matter of how uninterrupted it is, how the time span, the, and the ways that you kind of go about it. But at the end of the day, like I said, all programs will have an element of linearity to them, especially for strength. Now, hypertrophy, I'm not saying that hypertrophy is just this open barn door that allows you to do whatever the hell you want. But at the same time, this if you are more hypertrophy focused there are other ways to train that just might be more relevant to you which don't overcomplicate your training um to that to this degree or to a reasonable degree like if you are more hypertrophy focused 
while you are afforded a little bit more liberties, that doesn't necessarily mean you can be lazy with your programming. It doesn't mean you can be lazy with your periodization or anything like that. It just means that more things will work for you. And the degree to which everything that I laid out for you in this video may not be super applicable to you at whatever point in time. That's all that means. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Carlos King, stanstrain.com. If you would like to support the channel, I would highly recommend that you um, check me out on Patreon. I will be putting out content on there eventually. But if you really do want to help, there is something that I would highly um, appreciate. I think that for the next couple months, um, probably until the end of summer, I might actually like not monetize my channel, but monetize a cause that really does mean something to me. So um, at the gym that I work at, there is... I've made great friends with um, someone named Lenon um, Ford. He is a former professional fighter, and he does have a GoFundMe page for his cancer treatment. So, honestly, yeah, don't even go to my Patreon. Don't even do that. Look him up on GoFundMe. I'll leave in the link in the description below. Um, yeah, I'll just start that with this video. Starting today until... Um, let's go until end of maybe May, June... Who knows like i'll always have his information probably there um <clears throat> to help him out because he's just such the like one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life but yeah i'll have that in the link in the description below and we'll just go from there thank you so much for watching have a good day